you need to have something to give each other. I mean, it's uh, the, the personal friendship or the personal relation is very important, and I totally agree with that. Uh, for me personally, it's also very important, and therefore I'm very happy to be here. But at the same time, it's also, of course, a question, can we, uh, can the other partner give something in a partnership? And uh, I have the feeling that in the partnership between NASA and DLR, there is a, a lot which we can give each other. For instance, if you look to Sophia, the uh, a flying telescope, mm -hmm. infrared telescope. So we have really a, a perfect match. So it was the competence of NASA for the plane and everything. And then there was a competence of DLR giving the instruments, the, the telescope and all this. So it was a perfect match. And I was very happy that you are not looking for just, is it 50-50 by money, but is it something we can do together and then we are better than each of us. And if I were to add a final piece, it would be, uh, as I travel around, um, no matter where I go, uh, there are three principles on which we always operate. And, and that's the issue of transparency, uh, being honest with each other. Uh, reciprocity, meaning, as Jan said, there are things that we can give back and forth. They may not, be, uh, they may not have any involvement in money or funds, but there are reciprocal things that we can do. And the third is there must be a mutual benefit to both. Otherwise, you know, there's no, no really right. need to right. do it or interest in doing it. Yeah. And Jan, one of the things, you, you come from a background which is diverse in civil engineering. Uh, you spent time in Japan uh, studying earthquake safety. How, how does coming, you know, from a different background into aerospace where you're working with different international partners, sectors, different disciplines, how does that shape your thinking? Uh, and, and help you in it, your leadership? It shaped more than just thinking. First of all, earthquake engineering is a good basis for space technology because it's very dynamic. And therefore, <laughs> it's also a good basis for what we are doing here. You see, it is from my childhood, I was always interested in space technology. Um, my father put me on his arm and said, oh, look over there, there is Sputnik. I did not see anything, but I believed him. <laughs> uh, and then I followed all the American missions. Uh, really, I have them at home. Yeah, I can show you, I can, you can uh, check that. I followed everything. I, I knew everything, Buzz Aldrin and all these uh, people who, uh, Buzz Aldrin was here. But I really followed everything. And then I was just a civil engineer, but an engineer, has also some thinking and I tried uh, to develop. And then I became, uh, by chance, uh, president of a university. And this was, for my opinion, it was a good basis, um, even for future work, which I'm doing right now. Because as a president of a university, you have also to uh, tackle some problems, financial problems. You have a diversity of professors, which is a very special race. Uh, and then you have, um, you have international contacts. And, based, and I was lucky enough that I could uh, um, convince the government at that time to give uh, the university I was president of a special law. Uh, full autonomy for a public university was, uh, was a uh, great deal. And then I said, OK, now after 12 years, um, I should try to have even a higher challenge. And I was very lucky, and this is more than just some feeling. It shaped my life. The last three years have changed everything for me, um, and uh, I'm very grateful about that, that I have this chance in my life. It's unbelievable. Right.